Welcome to our time remembering and commemorating the passion of Christ on the cross. It's three o'clock here in the chapel at uh, Newham. We begin in the same way as we begin these commemorations in stillness throughout the world, except that this year, of course, we're in the stillness of our own homes, not gathered physically together, but gathered as Christ's body, his people, in prayer at this hour when he gave his life for us. So this is the moment in which we commemorate his passing, his death on the cross. We do so then for a moment in stillness. Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to read the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed into the Kedron Valley. There was a garden there, and he went into it with his disciples. Judas, the traitor, knew the place well, since Jesus had often met his disciples there, and he brought the cohort to this place together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with lanterns and torches and weapons, knowing Everything which was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus the Nazarene. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus replied, I have told you that I am he. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken, not one of those you gave me have I lost. Simon Peter, who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back in its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its captain and Jewish guard seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father of Lord and Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews it is better for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace, but Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who was keeping the door, and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now it was cold, and the servants and the guards had lit a charcoal fire, but were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret. But why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, 
Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If there is something wrong in what I said, point it out. But if there is no offence in it, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him still bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. As some Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and it was a cock crew. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium, which was now morning. They did not go into the praetorium themselves, or they would have been defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came outside to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If you were not a criminal, we should not be handing him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, We are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfil the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people, and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent me being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. Pilate said, So you are a king then? Jesus answered, It is you who said, Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. Pilate said, Truth, what is that? And with that he went out again to the Jews and said, I found no case against him, but according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a brigand. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged, and after this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They slapped him in the face. Pilate came outside again and said to them, Look, I am going to bring him out to you to let you see that I find no case. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and the guards shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I can find no case against him. The Jews replied, We have a law, and according to the law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you. Jesus replied, You would have no power over me if it had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself in the chair of judgment at a place called the pavement in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was Passover preparation day, about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the Jews, here is your king. They said, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said, Do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. 
So in the end, the pilot handed him over to them to be crucified. They then took charge of Jesus, and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, when they crucified him with two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city, and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the Jewish chief priest said to Pilate, You should not write King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, Instead of tearing it, let's throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of Scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them, they cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly as the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdalene. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed, and to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there, so putting a sponge soaked in vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing up his head, he gave up the spirit. was preparation day and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of special solemnity. The Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him, and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. And so, instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he knows he speaks the truth. And he gives it to you, so that you may believe as well. Because all this happened to fulfil the words of Scripture, not one of his bones will be broken. And again, in another place, Scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him have the body of Jesus. Pilate gave them a mission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time, and he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was Jewish day of preparation, the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. So as we gaze on the figure of Christ on the cross this Good Friday, we pause for a moment and think of those 
who share Christ's suffering, especially in this time of pain. Pray the prayers of intercession of the church throughout the world and pray for the church with an extra prayer of intercession which Pope Francis has given us at this time of pandemic for all those who suffer and all those who care. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord may be pleased to give her peace, to unite her, to unite her throughout our whole world. And grant that leaving our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty and ever knowing God, who in Christ revealed your glory to the nations, watch over the works of your mercy that your church spread throughout the world. May persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church, to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favour on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him your Christian people, governed by you their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, hope and love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Alan, for all bishops, priests and deacons of the Church, and for the whole of the faithful people of God. Almighty ever living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Catholic humans, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts, and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with the Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty ever living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring. Increase the faith and understanding of all our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unity of Christians, let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered, and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name, and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestows your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people who first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God that in following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. 
Almighty ever living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you, by finding you come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, so that in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of all our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in public office, that God, our Lord and God, may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart, and the rights of peoples, look with favour, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion, May through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for the afflicted in time of pandemic. Let us pray also for those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic. That God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. Almighty ever-living God, only support of our human weakness, look with compassion upon the sorrowful condition of your children who suffer because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick. Give strength to those who care for them. Welcome into your peace those who have died, and throughout this time of tribulation, grant that we may all find comfort in your merciful love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prison, loosen fetters, granting to travellers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever living God, comforter of all mourners, strengthen of, strengthen of all who, those who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to now what in our churches would have been the time of veneration of the cross, each one making a very personal act of venerating the cross of Christ, and joining themselves with his suffering on the cross, that we may know his life within us. We're just presented now with the image of the crucifix here in the chapel here. But uh, to accompany this time when in our own hearts, in our own faith, in our own way, today we make that act of veneration of love of Christ who gave his life for us that we might find life ourselves. There's a presentation which has been prepared for us um, which will accompany this time from one of the liturgies that took place uh, some years ago here at Newport, um, accompanied with the singing of Remem Jesus, Remember Me When You Come Into Your Kingdom. Be the way in which uh, we each make that act of veneration of the cross. This is the word of the cross, on which our Redeemer
And so we ask the Lord to keep us all safe in his care. As we continue this journey through uh, these times of the Paschal Triduum, we continue to pray with Christ around his cross as we look towards the celebration of the Easter Vigil. There will be a very short uh, lighting of the Paschal Candle um, tomorrow evening, and hopefully that will go online uh, very soon, and also the celebration of Mass on Easter Sunday morning. We pray now for God's blessing. Almighty ever living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may our abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people, who have honoured the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen.